Welcome to the introduction page of the Crop Planner tutorial. Uh, I'm Chris Thoreau and I'm going to walk through this Crop Planner tab by tab to give you a sense of all its features and how it works. So this will be split up into many different videos. I'm going to start here with our introduction tab because this gives you a sense of how the Crop Planner works. So just to start out, uh, the Crop Planner allows you to plan the production of 11 crops. It's a bit of an odd number, I know, but it's actually just the number of crops that fit on my screen and the spreadsheet really well when I designed it. Um, and some people want more. Uh, most people are not producing more than 11 crops, so it's a pretty good number for most producers. My suggestion is if you're doing many more crops than that, you can run two versions of this. And you could use one for one type of crop, like your small seeded crops, and then maybe another one for your large seeded crops. Uh, it's the only thing I can offer at the moment. It's good for scales of up to 500 trays or even more, uh, but if you're doing even, say, 100 trays a week, it would do um, a, pretty, um, a pretty good job. This is a um, uh, in the metric system, so things are in grams uh, as opposed to ounces, so I apologize to my American friends for that. Um, and I just want to go over some of the rules of the spreadsheet so you understand how it works. First of all, you're going to see on the left here these uh, lines and arrows. So what this does is allows you to collapse sections like I'm going to do here. And I like to do this because one of the challenges with spreadsheets is there is just too much information on the screen at a time. So I've read you this introduction. Now I'm going to make it disappear. Now I want to look at this section, so that's what I'm going to show. So I do this on a lot of the sections, even though it often collapses the whole section. In general, it just keeps the spreadsheet a little less intimidating. So you're going to find uh, basically uh, four types or five types of shells, cells within the spreadsheet. Uh, the first three are the most important ones. So the green cells are the ones in which you can enter your data. So this might be, you know, orders or weights for things. Uh, we'll get into that. Um, but this is, these are the only cells you actually put any information into. So remember that. These orange cells are where calculations take place. So if you edit one of those cells, you're going to be disrupting calculations. So basically don't edit the cells. They are editable, which means you can change them. Uh, but I, unless you really know what you're doing, I recommend leaving them alone. And then the gray cells are the ones that are labeled. So they'll, they'll tell you your crop or your, your category or your column or anything like that. So those you, you can change as well. Um, but generally, things are fairly standard and simply labeled, so I wouldn't recommend changing things. You're going to see some blue cells like this, and cells like this are ones that have uh, comments embedded in them, and we'll see those as we move along. So uh, when you hover over the cell like this, you're going to see a comment in there, and that's just going to give you some instructions. You can see on the tabs below that uh, this number here tells you how many comments are within the spreadsheet. And basically those are just instructions and hopefully I've put them at the place where you're already asking a question like, what do I do here or what's this for? So I've tried to be intuitive about that. Hopefully I've got that right. In a few sections, you're gonna see a sort of uh, more red cell and these are what I call flex cells. Now these are cells where data um, does get entered where there's a calculation but you may want to edit that for some reason because it's just not as simple to determine what actually goes there. For example, you might be using uh, a different type of sanitizer, and so you might want to switch that calculation based on what sanitizer you're, you're using. So um, one thing to note is that there are many tabs or sheets uh, that you can see here at the bottom. So as I scroll around, you can see there's all these different sections. We're only going to go through about half of these in the tutorial. The important thing to note is that uh, the each sheet is probably linked to at least one, if not multiple, other sheets. So changing something in one sheet is going to change things in many sheets. So this is what we want in terms of uh, changing production numbers. Like what happens if I bump somebody's salary down or up by 25 cents an hour? You can see changes across all the, all the sheets. Uh, what happens if we shift our price from $18 uh, to eighteen fifty per pound? We, we see that change. So that's why it's done. We see it in a bunch of different places. So um, if you do uh, delete uh, a formula, you may find things within the sheet don't work elsewhere. So be very careful about that. What I recommend you do when you get the spreadsheet is uh, make a copy of it and label it your master version and then tuck it away and never edit it at all. It's going to be the original. 
So once you have your master version, copy that again, and that's going to be your 2020 or your 2021 version. And then you can always go back to your master version to copy that. Now, if you start making edits and there's sound edits within your own versions, you can copy that for the future, or you can make those edits in your master one. You can decide on that. But unless you know spreadsheets very well, I recommend you keep things as is. I've spent hundreds of hours on this, and there's definitely some things that maybe aren't perfect, but most stuff should work fairly well, especially if you follow along in this tutorial. So I'm going to close this, and that's the end of the introduction. We're going to go on into looking at the other tabs.